Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Tawheed and I'm a student software engineer working under the supervision of Professor Hashim Abdullah Hashim at Clemson University University. In today's presentation, a stochastic observer for the SLAM on the lag group will be presented. First, presentation outline. The presentation will consist of the following. First, a brief background on what the SLAM problem is and what it constitutes. Then, the stochastic observer design will be presented and discussed. Then, the simulation and results will be presented. And finally, a brief summary of what was discussed in today's presentation will be mentioned. SLAM problem. First, what is the SLAM problem? Well, the diagram here presents a visual representation of what constitutes the SLAM problem. Note that for our application, we're assuming a vehicle in 3D space. So, as can be seen on the diagram, there are multiple parts to the problem. These parts can be categorized into two sections. One, pose, which consists of the vehicle's orientation and position, and two, map of the environment, which is also referred to as the features. Now, with the slime problem, we are dealing with two categories of data as well, known measurements and unknown. The known variables are the angular velocity, translational velocity, and the features, which is the information in the body frame or the frame attached to the moving vehicle. The unknown vari variables are the rigid body's orientation, the rigid body's position, and the feature position defined with respect to the earth frame. Now, why is it so important? Like, why is, like, why is the slime problem so important? One of the reasons that the slime problem is largely researched is that it's applicable in many areas, including transportation, deep sea navigation, mine exploration, surveillance, indoor applications, and many others. That being said, Though it's applicable in many areas, what's the true objective? Like, what are we trying to achieve? To answer that, let's first look at the problem formulation. For our application, we're considering the true slam dynamics of a vehicle traveling in the six degrees of freedom. This can be represented by formula one, which is the derivative of the homogeneous transformation matrix. This is equal to the homogeneous transform matrix here, multiplied by the velocity matrix here. These two, these two multiplied together can also be simplified to the following on the slide, where R is equal to the vehicle's orientation, P is equal to the vehicle's position, V is equal to the vehicle's linear velocity, omega is equal to the vehicle's angular velocity, PI is equal to the vehicle's feature position for one, two, three, all the way to n features, and VI is equal to the velocity of the feature defined with respect to the body frame or the moving vehicle. And then from before, we have R dot is equal to R, which is the vehicle's orientation multiplied by the skew symmetric of omega or the angular velocity, P dot being equal to the vehicle's orientation multiplied by V, which is the linear velocity of the vehicle, and small p dot i, which is equal to r multiplied by vi, where i is equal to 1, 2, all the way to n features. In our application, since we're, con we're, con we're considering static features, the velocity of the feature is always equal to 0. Now, going back to the original question, what is the objective of the slam filter? From earlier, we know that there are unknown unknown variables. The knowns are known and accounted for, but the unknowns then become the puzzle. So, our goal is to then estimate the unknowns, which from earlier are the, or the orientation, the position, and the feature position to the de closest degree possible, i.e., or in other words, estimate the unknowns so that r hat, the estimate, is very close to r, p hat, the estimate, is very close to p, and pi hat, the estimate, is also very close to pi. So now we have our unknowns formulated. Let's look at un let's look at formulating the known measurements. The angular velocity can be no denoted by formula three here, where omega m is equal to omega plus v omega 
plus n omega. Omega m represents the measured angular velocity. V omega represents any bias attached to the velocity, and n omega is any unknown random noise. Similarly, the translational or the linear velocity can be given by formula 4, where Vm is equal to V plus v, Bv plus Nv, where Vm is also the measured linear velocity, V is the true velocity, Bv is the bias, and Nv is any random noise potentially attached to the measurement. Then, for the last known variable, feature or landmark measurements, this can be donated by formula 5 here where i is the feature of the landmark measurement, pi is the feature position, bi represents any bias attached to the measurement, and ni is any noise randomly attached to the measurements. Now with the stochastic observer design. Now let's look at the, pro the proposed approach and the corresponding figure. First, we define the estimate of pi as p hat, as mentioned before. Then, we, we then define the estimate of the homogeneous transfer matrix T as T hat, and that's equal to this matrix here, where R hat is the estimate of R as stated, P hat is the estimate of the position, and P hat is the estimate of the position. We then define the error between the estimate of T, T hat, and T to be T times T to the negative 1. We've already seen t hat from previous, now let's look at t to the negative 1. Here we have r to the t, which is r transpose, and negative rtp, which is negative r transpose, transpose multiplied by the position. Multiplying t hat by t to the negative 1, we get this matrix here, which is what we refer to as the error in the vehicle's pose. Now, let's look at formulating the other errors. So on this slide, we have the errors in both biases, the covariance, and the uh, in the ith feature. First, we define the error in the biases. So for the angular velocity, we have b tilde omega, which is equal to b omega minus b hat omega. Likewise, the error in the linear velocity, the linear, the bias in the linear velocity is b tilde v, which is equal to b v minus b hat v. Finally, we define the error in the covariance of sigma tilde, which is equal to sigma minus sigma hat. And finally, we define the error in the ith component, which is EI as the error, which is the error associated with each feature in the matrix to be equal to small p tilde i minus p tilde. This is a formulation of the stochastic observer design proposed. One can observe the variables the variables defined before, and the methodology of the design slowly, step by step. I'll give you a few seconds to look at it and what it constitutes for yourselves. Now let's look at the stochastic theorem a bit closely. First, we have equations 16 through 18, which consider the true stochastic dynamic of the slam problem. Then, we assume that we have at least three landmarks and features available for measurements. After ensuring such, the last step of the approach is then to couple the proposed approach with the landmark or feature measurements. An example of this will be presented in the following slides. As well, the reason we set a minimum of at least three landmarks is that by doing so, we ensure at least that all closed loop signals are semi-globally, uniformly, and ultimately bounded. Simulation. Now for the application of the simulation itself. Step one of the approach is to initialize parameters and measurement biases. First, we consider that the true vehicle started at the identity matrix. We also consider the position of the vehicle to start at 0, 0, 1 transpose. Then, we let the vehicle, the angular velocity of the vehicle to omega to be 0, 0, 0 0.1 transpose, and we let the linear velocity of the vehicle to be 1.5, 0, 0 transpose. Now, step two is to let four non-collinear features be distributed across the map relative to the inertial frame. For our simulation, these four features here on the slides were chosen. Step four of the 
Well, step three of the approach is then to add corruption in the form of noise and bias to the velocities. So, in our case, we have b omega and n omega to be the bias or the corruption for the angular velocity, and b v and n v to be the corruption or or the bias and noise attached to the linear velocity. Now, step four of the approach is to initialize the estimates. We consider I, R had to be equal to the identity matrix, and P had to start at the origin, or zeros. In the same step, we then let all four feature positions to start at zero, so P1 hat is equal to P2 hat all the way to P4 hat. Step five of the approach is to select design parameters. One can observe these the seven design parameters chosen on the screen here. Then step five or step six of the approach is to select the initial initials in the bias and the covariance. For our case, we've chosen all to equal zero. So v omega hat is equal to b b v hat omega, which is equal to sigma tilde or b hat. Now, with that, all the variables are accounted for and defined, and we can take a look at the results of the simulation. The results. Here, we have the sensor measurements of the angular velocity for three landmark positions, respectively. The black horizontal line on each, on each plot denotes the true angular velocity, and the colored data in magenta, red, and blue denotes the, the measured velocity, which is corrupted with noise and bias. Here, one can also observe the effect of bias and noise and how it actually affects the true values. Similarly, this figure here denotes the sensor measurements for the translational or linear velocity. Like before, the black horizontal line denotes the true velocity, whilst the colored magenta, blue, and red denotes the major velocities that were corrupted with noise and bias and bias. Again, one observed the effect of the corruption for themselves. The previous data can also be represented using this figure here on the slide, which represents a visual representation of estimated features and position as well as their behavior. So first, as can be seen on the figure, the estimated position, which is the blue line, started at the origin, Step by step, the position, the estimated position actually started to follow the true trajectory, trajectory line all the way to the destination point. The same can be said for the estimated features. They all started at the origin, but then step by step, they converged towards the true values of P1, P2, P3, and P4, which is ideal. Um, we can look at the previous figure a bit more closely as well by looking at the x, y, and z axis respectively. Here we're looking at the plots of the estimated of the estimations of the vehicle's true position, which is in blue, and with respect to the true value of the, tr the true value of the position, which is in black. As can be observed, the values start to converge, becoming one, which is the effect. Of effect the objective of their approach improves the effectiveness of it. Summary. So to conclude, within this presentation, a slam problem and a brief background of what it was was presented briefly and formulated in a stochastic sense. Then, a nonlinear stochastic observer that was posed on the Lie group of slam was proposed and discussed, as well by setting minimums for landmarks. Closed loop signals were set, were shown to be semi globally uniformly and ultimately bounded. And finally, a simulation of the proposed approach demonstrated its effectiveness and robustness. This concludes my presentation, and thank you for taking the time to listen. Have a great rest of your day.